How are you guys doing? Today is Monday, October 4th, 2021. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, now that the 2021 MLB season has come to a close, I'm going to use this episode to, of course, recognize the pitchers that were able to accomplish the two elite feats, the one one of them being finishing a full season with an ERA below 3.0, which is less than three innings allowed per every nine innings or one run allowed per every three innings, which is a feat that only eight players in the entire MLB have done this season. And only one of them was in the American League, which is a much tougher feat consider, considering American League has designated hitters every ninth batter except for a pitcher. And then at the same time, I'm going to go through the players that were able to finish with at least... 200 strikeouts in the MLB and there were 17 pitchers in the MLB that were able to do so So without further ado just to get started with the ERA crown So just like I said ERA stands for earned run average That is the amount of runs that a pitcher allows for every nine inning interval and it's cu- and it's calculated at the end of every year That's just the, the simple fraction is the number of earned runs divided by the amount of innings times nine that is exactly how that works and then taking a look into how look taking a look into the pitchers in the major league that just finished outside of uh three that finished with an era between 3.0 and 3.1 there were three players that were in that honorable mention zone 11th in the league in era this season was adam wainwright the starting pitcher for the st louis cardinals uh, he would finish with a 17 and 7 record pitching for a St. Louis Cardinals team that just missed the playoffs. Sitting right ahead of him, Max Fried from the Atlanta Braves would finish 10th in the league with a 304 ERA as he finished with a 14 and 7, helping the Atlanta Braves clinch the best record in the East. And then the last honorable mention, the closest pitcher that had to a, an ERA of 3.0 was Marcus Stroman, the starting pitcher for the New York Mets out of Duke. He would finish with a 10 and 13 record on the season. In the major leagues, the ERA crown was given to Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns was the all-star starting pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers this season. In 167 innings pitched, he'd only allow 123 hits. That's 44 less hits than innings pitched. He would finish with an 11-5 and record, and alongside his 243 ERA, he would finish with 234 strikeouts. He is one of the pitchers that would finish with a sub-3 ERA and at least 200 strikeouts on the year. He would be one of the seven pitchers that had done so this year. The ERA runner-up this season was given to Max Scherzer, the goaded starting pitcher for the now Los Angeles Dodgers. He started the season with the Nationals, but of course he was moved in a trade. He would finish with a 15-4 and record on the season, and he would finish with a 246 ERA, just three points below her than Corbin Burns. In the 179 innings he pitched, he would allow 119 inning or he would allow 119 hits, which is 16 less hits than innings pitched. And he would finish with 236 strikeouts on the season. He would be another pitcher that had more than 200 strikeouts on the season. Third in the league in ERA was Walker Bueller. Walker Bueller, the elite starting pitcher for the LA Dodgers, would finish with a 16 and 4 record. He would have the second most amount of wins of any player on here who was or that that of all the players that had an ERA below three, he had the second most wins out of all eight of them. In the 207 innings that Walker Bueller pitched, he would allow 149 hits. That is 58 less hits than innings pitched. And he would go on to strike out 212 batters. That is five more strikeouts than innings pitched. Corbin Burns, Max Scherzer, and Walker Bueller were the three pitchers this season that had an ERA below 250, which is an incredible feat to do. But of course, this isn't for 2.5. This is for three. The fourth best ERA in baseball was given to Brandon Woodruff, the starting pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, Of course, the top four ERAs this season were given to two Brewers and two LA Dodgers. In the 179 innings that he pitched, he allowed 130 hits, which is 49 less hits than innings pitched. He would also strike out 211 batters on the season. That would be 32 more strikeouts than innings pitched. 
And of course, he would finish with a nine and ten record, and he would fit. And like I said, his two fifty six ERA was the fourth best in baseball. Following him, the fifth best ERA in baseball was Zach Wheeler's. The starting pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies would pitch 213.1 innings. He pitched the most innings out of any pitcher in baseball this season and still had a sub-3 ERA. He would finish with a 278 ERA on the season alongside his 14-10 and 10 record. In his 213 innings, he would strike out or he would allow 169 hits within that span. That would be 44 more innings pitched or 44 less hits than innings pitched. He would strike out 247 batters. That would end up being 34 more strikeouts than innings pitched. Zach Wheeler would have the second most strikeouts in the MLB this season as well. But of course, he would finish with the fifth best ERA this season. He is one of the he is one of the seven pitchers that would finish with a sub two with a sub three ERA and in with a, and a strikeout number above 200. Sixth in the MLB in ERA was Kevin Gosman, the starting pitcher for the San Francisco Giants, would finish the season with a 2.81 ERA. With, he would finish with a 14-6 and six record on the season. In the 192 innings he pitched, he allowed 50 hits. That's 42 less hits than innings pitched. He would strike out 227 batters, which would be 25 more for 35 more strikeouts than innings pitched. And also following him would be the only player from the American League who would finish with an ERA below three. Robbie Ray, the starting pitcher for the American League and the front runner for the American League, of course, the the Cy Young Triple Crown thus far. Um, The only thing that he doesn't have is the wins, I believe. But regardless... Robbie Ray would finish the season with a 2.84 ERA. He would finish with a 13-7 and record for a Toronto Blue Jays team that just missed the playoffs. In the 193 innings he pitched, he allowed 150 hits, which is 43 less hits than innings pitch. He would strike out 248 batters on the year, which is the most strikeouts this season. Um, and I'll get to that once we get to the strikeout leaders. And then, of course, eighth in the league in ERA and the, and the lowest or I guess the highest ERA of any pitcher this league whose ERA was in three went to Julio Urias. The starting pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers would finish the season with a 2.96 ERA to go along with his amazing 20-3 and record. He was the only player in the MLB to surpass 20 wins this year. He would pitch 185.2 innings for the defending champs LA Dodgers who were one win away from having the best record in all of baseball. They, he would allow 151 hits and 185 innings pitched. He would finish with 34 less hits than innings pitched. He would finish with 195 strikeouts on the season. He would be the only pitcher that had a sub three ERA that had less than 200 strikeouts on the season. But regardless, that is how Julio Urias will will round out the top of the ERA charts. And then of course, looking at the pitchers that would finish with at least 200 strikeouts on the season. There were 16 or there were 17 pitchers that just missed the cut. Uh, Looking at the players that finished with at least 195, number 18 was Yu Darvish. Yu Darvish would finish with 199 strikeouts on the season as he would, um, like he would just miss the cut, the elite starting pitcher for the San Diego Padres. Um, as he would finish with 199 strikeouts and 166 innings, 33 more strikeouts than innings pitched. And then there will be a three-way tie for 19th as Julio Urias, the starting pitcher for the LA Dodgers, who finished with a 20-3 record, the only person that that didn't finish with over 200 strikeouts, that would have that didn't have two that had a ERA below um, three out of qualifying pitchers. Uh, of course, Freddie Peralta for the Milwaukee Brewers and Nate Avaldi for the Boston Red Sox. As pretty as Freddie Peralta was another pitcher that had. A ERA below three, but he did not qualify for the pitchers in terms of the ERA count. Um, but now looking at the pitchers that were able to finish with at least 200 strikeouts this season, starting from the bottom, uh, starting with these t- the two-way tie for 16th place, you have Lucas Giolito, the starting pitcher for the Chicago White Sox that would help them win the American League Central. Uh, G- Lucas Giolito would finish with 201 strikeouts and 178 innings. 
that is 23 more strikeouts than innings pitched and he would do so while finishing with an 11 and 9 record and a 353 ERA on the year. Tied with him in strikeouts with Sandy Alcantara, he also finished with 201 strikeouts as he did so in 205 innings. He had four less strikeouts than innings pitched. He would finish the season with a 9 and 15 record holding a 319 ERA for a Miami Marlins team that was eliminated from playoff contention after they had the fourth best record in the National League East. 15th in the MLB in strikeouts was Joe Musgrove, the starting pitcher for the San Diego Padres. He would finish with 203 strikeouts and 181 innings. That's 22 more strikeouts than innings pitched. He would finish with an 11-9 record and a 3.18 ERA for a San Diego Padres team that was on track to make the playoffs but just lost. That, but they kind of really lost it all at the very end. But Joe Musgrove was a very consistent force. 14th, the 14th most strikeouts in the MLB went to Jose Barrios. The starting pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays would finish with 204 strikeouts and 192 innings pitch. That's 12 more strikeouts than innings. He would finish the year with a 12 and 9 record, holding a 3.52 ERA for a Blue Jays team that was just one win shy of making the cut of the playoffs. 13th in the league in strikeouts was Frankie Montas, the starting pitcher for the Oakland Athletics. He would finish with 207 strikeouts and 187 innings pitched. That's 20 more strikeouts than innings pitched. And then he would go on to finish the season with a 13 and 9 with a 13 and 9 record holding a 3.37 ERA for an Oakland Athletics team that just missed the cut. And looking out at Cincinnati for the 12th most strikeouts in baseball, it went to Tyler Malley. Tyler Malley would finish the season with 210 strikeouts in 180 innings. He would finish with a 13-6 and record and a 3.75 ERA for a Cincinnati Reds team that had the best record in the National League outside of the playoff picture, but they didn't make it. The 11th most strikeouts in baseball went to Brandon Woodruff, the all-star starting pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers. He would finish with 211 strikeouts and 179.1 innings as he was one of the seven players that had a sub three ERA and at least 200 strikeouts. His 211 strikeouts would end up being 32 more strikeouts and innings pitched on the season. He would finish with a nine and 10 record. And like I said, he had a 256 ERA on the year. The 10th most strikeouts in baseball went to Walker Buehler, the elite starting pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He would finish with 212 strikeouts and 207.2 innings pitched. He had the second most innings pitched in all of baseball this season, but of course it helped him get on both lists, one of seven pitchers in the major leagues to do so. He would finish with a 16-4 and record and a 247 ERA for the defending World Series champs LA Dodgers who are fighting for their playoff lives in a single elimination wildcard game coming up. Ninth in the MLB in strikeouts was Charlie Morton. The starting pitcher for the Atlanta Braves would finish with 26 strikeouts in 185 innings. That would be 31 more strikeouts than innings pitched. He would finish with a 14 and 6 record alongside a 3.34 ERA for an Atlanta Braves team that finished at the very top of the National League East. Sitting above Charlie Norton, uh, sitting in the eighth spot in the major leagues in strikeouts was Aaron Nola. Aaron Nola would finish the season with 223 strikeouts and 180 innings pitched. That is 43 more strikeouts and innings pitched on the season. Aaron Nola would finish with a 9-9 record, holding a 4.63 ERA for a Philadelphia Phillies team that just missed the playoff cut. Aaron Nola is the only pitcher out of the 17 pitchers that had at least 200 strikeouts with an ERA above 4. So his strikeout numbers were there. He was just allowing a lot of runs to cross the plate. Seventh in the league in strikeouts was Dylan Seas, the starting pitcher for the Chicago White Sox, the, the AL Central champs. Dylan Seas would finish with 226 strikeouts and 165.2 innings. That would go on to be 61 more strikeouts than innings pitched. He would finish with a 13-7 and record, holding a 391 ERA. Of course, doing so for the White Sox, helping them make the playoffs. And they're going, their next matchup is going to be against the Houston Astros. The six most strikeouts in baseball went to Kevin Gosman, the starting pitcher for the San Francisco Giants. He would finish with 227 strikeouts and 192 innings. That would be 35 more strikeouts than innings pitched. 
He would finish with a 14 and six record while leading the San Francisco Giants to the best record in baseball this season. And he would finish with a 281 ERA. He is one of the seven pitchers that that finished with at least 200 strikeouts with an ERA below three. Sitting above him is yet another one of those pitchers as the fifth most strikeouts in the MLB went to Corbin Burns, the all-star starting pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers. He would strike out 234 batters in 167 innings. That would end up being 67 more strikeouts than innings pitched. He would finish with an 11 and 5 record and a 2.43 ERA for a Milwaukee Brewers team that would win the NL Central. Corbin Burns is of course the player that had the lowest ERA out of all qualified pitchers in the MLB this season. Sitting above him was the runner-up in that category as the fourth pitcher or the, the player that had the fourth most strikeouts in the major leagues was Max Scherzer. The goaded starting pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers would put up 236 strikeouts and 179 innings. That is 57 more strikeouts than innings pitched on the season. He would finish with a 15-4 and record and a 246 ERA in a season that saw him start with the Washington Nationals but end up on the defending World Series champs LA Dodgers as they are fighting for their lives in a single game or in a single game elimination uh, playoff matchup against the St. Louis Cardinals who had the longest active, who had the longest winning streak in baseball going into the playoff picture. So, of course, that's a lot of context. Third in the league in strikeouts was Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole would finish with 243 strikeouts and 181 innings pitched. That's 62 more strikeouts than innings pitched. He would finish with a 16-8 and record, holding a 3.23 ERA for a New York Yankees team that just squeaked into the playoffs. He is going to face off against Nathan Avaldi for his very first matchup of the playoffs. And then sitting right ahead of him was the National League strikeout leader and the MLB runner-up in strikeouts, Zach Wheeler. Zach Wheeler would finish with 247 strikeouts and 213 innings. Nobody in the major leagues pitched more innings than Zach Wheeler this season. He would finish with a 14-10 and 10 record, holding a 278 ERA <clears throat> for a Philadelphia Phillies team. That was a few games away from taking the NL East crown, but they have been eliminated from playoff contention as well. And the major league strikeout crown was given to Robbie Ray. Robbie Ray would strike out 248 batters in 193 innings. That would be 55 more strikeouts than innings pitched on the season. He pitched 20 less innings actually than Zach Wheeler, and he had one more strikeout. He would finish with a 13-7 and record, holding a 284 ERA for a Toronto Blue Jays team that just missed the playoffs by a game. But of course, that is the leaders in strikeouts. And last but not least, taking you through the players that finished with at least 30 saves this season. There were 30, there were 30 pitchers in the MLB that finished with at least 30 saves. There were three that finished with at least 25 that just missed it, looking in the honorable mentions. There was a two-way tie for 11th as Ian Kennedy of the Philadelphia Phillies and Ryan Presley of the Houston Astros both finished with 26 saves. Ian Kennedy did so in 30 opportunities. Ryan Presley did it in 28. And then 10th in the MLB in saves was Alex Reyes of the St. Louis Cardinals. He finished with 29 saves and 34 opportunities as he went on to strike out 95 batters in a 72-inning span. Now looking at the nine players that did finish with at least 30 saves on the season, with at least with the actually 30, the ninth most saves in the MLB went to Aroldis Chapman. The say the closer for the New York Yankees would save 30 of his 34 opportunities. He would pitch 56.1 innings, allowing 36 hits. That's 20 less hits than innings pitched. He would strike out 97 batters on the day, which is 31 more strikeouts than innings pitched. He would finish the season with a 6-4 record, holding a 336 ERA for a Yankees team that is still fighting for their playoff lives. They are one of the 10 teams competing for the World Series this year. Sitting ahead of him in eighth place in the MLB, it was Jake McGee, the closer for the San Francisco Giants that finished with the best record in baseball. Jake McGee would finish with 31 saves and 36 opportunities. In 59 innings pitched, he would allow only 44 hits. That is 15 less hits than innings pitched. He would strike out 58 batters, which is one less strikeout than inning pitched. He would finish the season with a 3-2 and record, holding a 272 ERA for the Giants that are still fighting for their playoff lives as well.
Sitting ahead of him in seventh place in saves was Edwin Diaz, the closer for the New York Mets. Edwin Diaz would finish with 32 saves and 38 save opportunities. He would go on to finish with 89 strikeouts and 62 innings, which is 27 more strikeouts than innings pitched. He would also go on to allow 43 hits in those 62 innings, which is 19 less hits than innings pitched on the year. Edwin Diaz would finish with a 5-6 record, holding a 345 ERA. And sitting right ahead of him, there is a two-way tie for fifth place in the MLB with 34 saves on the season. Uh, Rysel Iglesias from the Los Angeles Angels had 34 saves and 39 opportunities. Uh, In 70 innings pitched, he would allow 53 hits, which is 17 less hits than innings pitched. He would also go on to strike out 103 batters in those 70 innings, which is 33 more strikeouts than innings. Rizel Iglesias would finish the season with a 7-5 record, holding a 2.57 ERA for a Los Angeles Angels team that failed to make the playoffs. Out of he was the only, or I guess he is the second best pitcher on a team that failed to make the playoffs. And then sitting right ahead of him, or I guess sitting tied with him in terms of saves, was Josh Hader, the elite. Closer for the Milwaukee Brewers finished with 34 saves and 35 save opportunities. In the 58.2 innings he pitched, he would allow 25 hits total. That is 33 less hits than innings pitched. He would strike out 102 batters in those 58 innings, which would go on to be 44 more strikeouts than innings pitched. Hader would finish the year with a 4 and 2 record holding a 1.23 ERA of the players that are in the top 10 he is the only player with an ERA below 2 and much below 2 it's below 1.25 even but sitting right ahead of him in terms of saves, fourth in the league in saves was Will Smith, the closer for the Atlanta Braves. He would finish with 37 saves and 43 opportunities. In 68 innings pitched, he would allow 49 hits. That is 19 less hits than innings pitched on the year, and he would strike out 87 batters. Will Smith would strike out 19 more batters than he would pitch innings in the season. He would finish with a 3-7 and record and a 3.44 ERA for the Atlanta Braves, the team that won the National League East. Sitting ahead of him, there was a two-way tie for the saves crown runner-up. Uh, sitting in, or I guess sitting in one of those spots is, of course, Liam Hendricks. The elite closer for the Chicago White Sox would finish with 38 saves and 44 save opportunities. In the 71 innings he pitched, he would allow 45 hits. That's 26 less hits than innings pitched. He would finish with 113 strikeouts in the 71 innings he pitched. That's the most strikeouts out of anybody in the top 10 in saves. And his 113 strikeouts are 42 more strikeouts than innings pitched on the year. Liam Hendricks would finish with an 8 and 3 record holding a 2.54 ERA for the AL Central Champs the Chicago White Sox. Uh, the mo- and sitting alongside him is Kenley Jansen, the closer for the LA Dodgers would finish with 38 saves and 43 opportunities. In 69 innings he would allow 36 hits, which is 33 less his- less hits than innings pitched. Kenley Jansen would strike out 86 batters on the day. That is 17 more strikeouts than innings pitched. Kenley Jansen would finish the season with a 4-4 four and four record, holding a 222 ERA for the defending champs, LA Dodgers, who are going to play in a single-game elimination versus the St. Louis Cardinals. I wouldn't be surprised if they whipped out Kenley Jansen. And then last but not least, the win, the saves crown for the MLB went to a pitcher who didn't even make the playoffs this year. The save crown went to Mark Melanson, the closer for the San Diego Padres. He would finish with 35 saves and 45 save opportunities. He would have the most save opportunities of anybody on this list. He would, uh, in the 64 innings he pitched, he would allow 54 hits. That is 10 less hits than innings pitched. And he would strike out 59 batters on the day. That is five less strikeouts than innings pitched. He would finish with four. He would finish with a four and three record, holding a two twenty three ERA for a San Diego Padres team that that failed to even finish with a winning record this season. They finished with the third best record in the West. 
And right now, those are the three categories, of course, that define pitching royalty in this sport. And of course, I tip my hat to all these players that put in all their hard work that were able to accomplish this amazing feat. And of course, to the guys that just missed it or that are trying to get out. Hopefully, I hope to see you guys in a season coming up. But as of right now, with the season being over, these were the guys that did it. With that said, I want to thank everyone once again for listening to this piece. I hope all is well. I want to thank the MLB Stats website as it was able to help me get all my facts and figures. And following this, I'm going to do a batting royalty for the episode for the season as well. And until then, I want to thank everyone. I hope all is well. Thanks for being patient with me for all these end of the season episodes. But at the end, it is I, I, I do find it fun. And this has been a really wild season. So it's wild to just put it all into perspective. Thanks once again. I hope all is well. And I'll catch you with another episode after this. Peace out.